guys, welcome back to One Grunt's Point of View. So today we're going to be going over the um, we're going to be going over reloads for the beginner rifle series. I am not at all trying to tell you that this is how you should do reloads. I'm just trying to teach the way that I personally do reloads and the way I personally feel that beginner shooters should be taught how to do reloads. Um, let me preface this video by saying this is not the fastest reload method out there. I am not at all going to stand here and tell you this is the fastest way to do reloads. Uh, that is just ignorant if I were to say that, and I understand that this isn't the fastest way to do reloads. However, the way I'm about to teach you is the most consistent way to do reloads that you will find throughout shooting. And by consistency, I mean um, during the day, under nods, around cover, in a vehicle, different positions, awkward positions. Anytime that you have people around you, this method is going to be the safest way as well. And if I was going to be, if I only can teach a new shooter one way because I only have, let's like my job personally, right? I'm a combat instructor and I only get a week to teach students how to shoot a rifle. If I have a week to teach you how to reload, I don't wanna teach you every single way on how to reload. I wanna teach you the one way to reload that is gonna cover all of your bases and let you learn the faster ways as you progress as a shooter. But as a new shooter, if I can only teach you one way, I'd rather teach you the consistent way instead of the fast way, if that makes sense. So the way that I like to reload is what a lot of people will do the underarm reload so if i'm on my target pull the trigger my bolt pull the trigger bolt locks to the rear i place the weapon on safe i'm going to break the gun down to where it's inside of my workspace I'm going to go for my magazine insert my mag press the bolt release and then represent the rifle this can be broken down into a decent amount of steps. Generally, I'll break it down into three. And let's go over each of those three steps real quick. Let me drop this ear pro so that way I can walk you guys through it. Empty mag for demonstration purposes at the moment. Start off with putting the weapon on safe. This seems to piss a lot of people off. I've even seen YouTubers that are in the Marine Corps. I'm not gonna name names for those guys, but I've seen YouTubers that say, don't put your weapon on safe when you're doing a reload, it's unnecessary. If you think it's unnecessary to put your weapon on safe during a reload, regardless of the circumstance or when you are putting the weapon on safe, where the muzzle is oriented, personally, I don't wanna shoot next to you in a team environment. And I know that seems like a very cocky statement. Putting the weapon on safe, I will stand here for hours and harp on why it's important. But essentially, when I'm teaching this reload, what I generally will tell people is you're not gonna stand still in a fight and reload your weapon in the open. You're gonna move to cover, hopefully, to reload. As well as constantly around you, things are moving. Whether that's civilians or that's teammates, and the purpose of a reload is to get ammunition back into the rifle. Now, once I send that bolt home, if my finger's on the trigger or my finger is it slides off my magazine release and slams into my trigger, I can ND the rifle. And so at that point, I need to have the weapon on safe to ensure that I will, one, not ND, but also that the people around me are safe once this weapon has been reloaded. That, you know, soapbox we can talk about safety manipulation for days, but essentially those are the reasons. I don't want to have the gun on fire if I am moving, if teammates are moving, or if the enemy is moving around because then I can no longer guarantee where those rounds are going. And I don't want to be the reason that someone unnecessarily gets shot. So I'm gonna put my weapon on safe. So from the starting position for the reload, crank my round weapon immediately goes on safe. 
weapons on safe, I tuck the rifle back in. And the purpose of bringing the rifle into the workspace is one, for consistency, like I spoke about before. It's a lot easier for you to find the magazine well when the rifle is in front of you like this versus when it's out here and you're trying to balance the weight of the rifle with just this one arm. But also, you're trying to hunt for an opening that's facing away from you. Whereas if you break the gun down, you're pulling it in closer, you can now identify the magazine well a lot easier and it's a lot easier to find it. You're also looking at your magazine or your bolt release. When you look at the bolt release, it's gonna be much easier for your thumb to guide into and find it. So under stressful situations, when your fine motor skills start to go to shit, when I come here and I insert that magazine, if I glance to my bolt release, I'm gonna see it. I'm gonna be able to figure out where it's at and touch it. And then that way I can ensure that I send the bolt forward. <coughs> Now I've seen people teach the, you know, you do the reload and then you smack the side of the rifle. Uh, personally, I feel like that's unnecessary. The ping pong paddle on the side of the rifle is the size of your thumb. And if you grab your magazine the way that I'm about to show you, your thumb will naturally ride up to the ping pong paddle. If you've been training to slap the mag and you just want to continue to do your mag slap, dude, do whatever you want to do. I'm not telling you how to do it. I'm just showing you the way that I do it. So the next piece of the reload, right? Pull on safe. As I'm pulling the rifle down into my workspace, I'm hitting the magazine release and I'm ejecting that spent mag. So magazine falls down. I've got the weapon canted to where I can see my magazine well. When I go for my magazine, if you notice how I have my mags oriented, I keep the bullets facing forward. This is so when I come down, I used to run my mags this way and I see a lot of guys running their mags this way. And if you're comfortable with this, I'm not trying to tell you to change it. Personally, I don't like this because when I'm wearing a belt, this isn't a big deal. But when I'm in kit and I have to come up to my mag, I'm bending my, my shoulder and my elbow in a very harsh bend. I then have to continue to bend and put strain on my shoulder and my elbow, and now my wrist is in a weird position. From here, I have to rotate and move to my magazine well or whatever it is I'm trying to get this magazine towards. Versus, if I run my bullets facing forward, and I'm shooting, 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 my gun goes dry and I bring it down, I take my hand and I slide my hand down my chest. The back of my hand hits the top of my mag, pushes it away from my body. If you notice, my thumb is now riding on the side of the mag. Essentially, I'm going to slap and snatch. So I slap and snatch the magazine out. My thumb is now riding really high on the magazine. What this does for me is one, I'm not bending in any awkward position, right? So in kit, I'm not having to raise my elbow or my shoulder or torque my wrist a certain way. I'm simply just slapping that magazine out of the pouch. Once I have that magazine with my thumb riding really high on it, I can then guide, using my thumb, guide that magazine into the magazine well and my thumb is already riding close enough to hit the bolt release. So for me personally, Travis Haley likes to talk about, you know, biomechanics a lot. For me personally, biomechanically, that makes more sense doing a reload this way. So that would be your second part. Now you notice how I said my focal shift goes from the target to my rifle. This has been debated by a lot of people and I could be totally wrong. I could be right. I don't know, okay? I'm not gonna stand here and say that I'm the only one that's right, and situation will always dictate what's going on. However, if I'm in a fight and I'm engaging this guy that's in front of me, um, I have a target at like seven yards right now. If I'm engaging this target and my gun goes dry, is the problem that that guy's still standing there or is the problem that I no longer have rounds in my gun to fight that guy? The problem is, is I can no longer fight with this rifle. 
So this is now the priority, getting bullets back into this. So once I shoot and I break this weapon to right here, as soon as this magazine is grabbed and I go into this portion of the reload from, from the pouch to here, my focal shift goes from my target to my gun. So generally what I'll do, <clears throat> and this is something I tell students to do as well, is when you fire, you break the gun down, and as soon as you get to right here, you pause. So you take that little millisecond pause to ensure that your magazine is facing the right way into the magazine well. Generally what that'll look like is here, pause, and then insert, okay? And it ensures that you don't miss the magazine well, okay? It ensures that you take that just a little bit of a second to make sure you don't do one of these because we've all done the, where you, half of it's not in there, half of it's not in there, and then you finally stick it, right? So you take that little pause, get it in there, hit the bolt, punch the gun back out, and get your round off. Now, if you watched, if you watched my last video in this series that we went over safety manipulation and presentation, I talked about the high ready. As soon as you complete the reload from down here, going back to the target is a simple high ready presentation of punching the gun back out and cranking around off, getting your shot off. It's important to practice that high ready so that way during your reloads, it's not the first time you're doing the high ready is coming out of a reload. So now what I'm gonna do, I'll do it live for you. I'll show you the steps, I'll go slow, and then I'll do one at full speed and we'll put it on a timer for the full speed one and we'll see how fast I can get this down. So let's do this. All right. So I come up, crank my shot, weapon on safe, drop the mag, grab my new source of ammunition, quick pause, insert press, back up, on target. So let's do it at full speed. Now this rifle's a little chunky. And the timer didn't catch it because it's pressed. <laughs> um, I don't know how to get that to you. Honestly, it's probably not going to pick it up. Either way. This is why I need my, uh, my buddy who's always timing everything for me and recording everything. Maybe it'll work better there. Let's try it this way. All right. The split time was a 339. Didn't pick it up. So you heard me say there the split time. A lot of other YouTubers that I've seen and a lot of other people generally when they're training will do one reload ones or two reload twos and they go off of the um, they judge their reload speed based on the overall time, so their reaction to the timer. When you're in a fight and you're gunning at some guy, when your rifle goes dry, that is when the time starts. Okay, so the time doesn't start when you're shooting, 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 right? And it's not a gauge on, I know the reload's coming, I know the reload's coming. Whenever I do the assessment, which if you haven't seen the assessment, go check the assessment out. But when I run the assessment, the reason that we go off of the split time for your reloads is because I am gauging your speed to conduct the reload. Not your reaction to a timer telling you that a reload is coming, but your reaction to bolt lock, I have to reload. So that's why I do that. The so last thing I need to talk to you guys about before we take off is tactical reloads. Now I just explained speed reloads and how to do a speed reload, but a tactical reload is essentially 
when there is a lull in the fight. So if the fight is no longer as ramped up and you have a chance to reload, I would rather start the next fight with a full gun than I would with a unknown number of rounds from the last fire fight I was just in. There's two ways to do tack reloads that are generally, um, generally looked at. If you have a plate carrier, I would suggest going from the furthest source of ammunition, so whatever is the most uncomfortable mag to get to, because once you replace that mag with the mag and the gun, then that mag is now not as fully loaded as your other mags that are closer to where your hand will go, okay? So go for the furthest point of ammunition. All I have on me right now is the belt, so I'm gonna go for the belt. But the two ways are the L method, where you grab the mag like this, you rotate, strip, rotate your arm and insert the next mag, then you retain your used mag or the beer can. What I like to do is I'll grab around the magazine with my index finger. Um, I'll grab high, shoving my index finger between the two mags, gripping the other mags or the other mag with my hand, strip, reinsert this mag, make sure it's seated and then take my used mag and retain it in my kit. So that will generally look like that. So those are two methods you can use for tack reloads. Um, I generally will be doing speed reloads for training because that's my worst case, but I always tack reload after a drill in order to get that muscle memory of after you finish fighting, go ahead and reload, make sure your weapon is topped off and you're ready for the next fight. With that all being said though, thanks for stopping by and we'll catch you around. Oh, 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 oh,